Kobe? Hello? We have a little bit of a situation we wanted to run by you. Tobias, wow. Great to see you again. <laughs> that, that's what's been happening. Wow, time slipping. Wait, time, you know that? Yeah. You've seen that? Yeah. Can you fix that? No. It's impossible to time slip in the TVA. I know, but we just saw it happen. Yeah. I've been pulled through time between the past and the present. Hello? If what I saw is true, there's nothing to stand between this world and utter destruction. Only one way to find out. A little good old-fashioned legwork. Listen, we have different styles. You're a man of action, which is fine. I take a more slow, deliberate, cerebral approach. It's really goodbye. It's up to us to save this place. Is this cracked? You're good. Whatever we do, we're playing God. We are gods. But how do you choose? Who lives? And who dies? Make the hard choice. It's him. You better run! War is on its way. Come on, you're the god of mischief. Always have been, always will be. A little over the top, don't you think? I thought it was spot on. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. There's a brand new Loki season two trailer, so we'll break it all down. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs here. I know there are a lot of questions about how this crosses over with the events of Deadpool 3 because the TVA is a big part of that, too. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. This will be coming after the Ahsoka episodes are done. I'll be doing videos for that starting in a couple weeks when that releases. There'll be eight episodes of that, six episodes of Loki season two, just like season one, though. Just starting at the beginning of the trailer footage and working our way through shot by shot, talking about Easter eggs, WTF moments, and the Deadpool of it all. They start with Loki and Mobius going to the TVA's tech support room to get some help from Kei Hui Kwan, who's playing Ouroboros, who's basically like the tech support guy for the entire TVA. Most of you have probably just seen him in Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, which is another great multiverse movie. Probably one of the best multiverse movies ever, which is kind of what Doctor Strange should have been. He says Loki is time slipping and he's basically uncontrollably jumping around in his own timeline within the TVA and they said that shouldn't happen because of the way the Kang set the TVA up. There's a new version of the Loki Marvel Studios intro that shifts to red. Throughout the trailer we see him time slipping in a couple different places. This is just one of the interrogation rooms. He slips to a jet ski dealership which is a reference to all of Mobius's jet skis in the 90s that he's obsessed with because that's where he originally came from, probably. Really hoping he gets that jet ski at some point, maybe during Deadpool, that feels appropriate. Part of the joke here too is that he's just flailing his arms around like the advertising blow up doll. Piranha is a brand of jet ski but you could also call that a reference to Kang the Conqueror, the Kang Multiverse War, the Council of Kangs being sort of like piranhas in the water of time. You notice he time slips and sees himself in the TVA like he crosses over with his own personal timeline within the TVA. Zoom and enhance, you also see what looks like this crazy readout on the screen of what's happening with the timeline. It also looks like there's an error message up on the board and he's trying to read in this manual to find more information about this error message. This is Sylvie back in what looks like the 1970s where she's working at that McDonald's at a record store with what looks like a record raveling together through time, but just the record itself. This is a scene of Loki trying to reveal to Mobius and all the other people that are part of this new timeline of the TVA what's really going on with Kang the Conqueror, like he tries to open up this wall here to show them the truth of Kang behind it. I think what happens at the very beginning of the season is he has to do a speed run explainer for everything that happened during season one to all these different characters, including Mobius, who's off screen right here. Just to tell them the truth of Kang the Conqueror, unveiling that behind this wall here, behind the fake timekeepers. 
You also notice he's already chopped the head off of one of the Timekeeper robots. Part of the idea is that he, Sylvie, and anyone from the Council of Kangs like the Victor Timely Kang are the only people who actually remember what happened in the previous timeline. Them in the elevator here seems like they're going to the basement to visit Ouroboros and that's where his lab is or where his workshop is at the very basement of the TVA. They go back to the 1800s and this is meant to be where that Victor Timely Kang is. That's why the fair looks like it's an 1800s looking fair. This person isn't like another version of Kang, it's just like a random person who works here during this time period. You notice they have all these different banners from all the different nations of the world made to look kind of medieval with shields. Then they combine a couple different episodes together. So it's him talking to Loki in the 1800s, but they use footage from them in the 1970s, completely different episode, going after Raphael Casal, who's playing the Zaniac character. So part of the idea is that even though they're trying to unravel the mystery of Kang the Conqueror and what's happening with the time slipping, the Kang multiverse war, Victor Timely Kang, there's a bunch of different Kangs that are going after, but also they're still going after regular variants that are causing Nexus events like this Zaniac person. We see Loki using his magic during a couple different scenes back in the 1800s, but also during that 1970s Zaniac episode. Mobius continues talking to Loki, the same conversation, but they cross over footage of them in an automat inside the TVA. This is them arriving at that 1970s Zaniac premiere. There are a whole bunch of Easter eggs during this. The movie Zaniac is a huge Easter egg because Zaniac is an actual Marvel character from the comics, but in the Marvel universe, Zaniac was kind of like the essence or the spirit of a serial killer who would possess different people's bodies across time using supernatural means. The reason why they're using him on the Loki series is because he appeared for the first time in the Thor comics, and this is Loki, so obviously Thor connection, you get it. But the star of the movie, Brad Wolf, is another Easter egg because in the Marvel Universe, in the comics, he was just a regular actor who signed on to play a fictional version of the Zaniac character in a movie inside the Marvel comics. But then when he was dressed like the Zaniac character, they started filming the movie doing his scenes. He had an accident and was mutated into the actual Zaniac character, possessed by a spirit, he turned into a killer, tried to kill a bunch of the crew members until Thor stopped him, and they threw him in an insane asylum. So if you remember the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 deleted scenes with the Wonder Man character played by Nathan Fillion, like he played a version of that character in the universe, but he was an actor pretending to be these different characters. So they're kind of doing the same thing. It's the same energy with this Zaniac movie. But basically during Loki season two, it seems like they're doing a version of that Zaniac origin story, except when the actor gets turned into the real Zaniac going crazy, trying to kill a bunch of people, it's Loki who stops them from killing everyone instead of Thor. And if you zoom in enhance on the movie poster credits here for all the other actors names, the production crew members names, the production company is listed as a Goodman production. That's a huge Easter egg for the origin of the Marvel comic book company itself. Originally, the company was owned by Martin Goodman, who owned Timely Comics. That was the original name of Marvel Comics. He's the one who hired a young Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, all those classic era Marvel creatives that you know. Then later, the company changed its name a couple times, eventually changing it to Marvel Comics. They've used the Martin Goodman Productions Easter egg a couple times in the Marvel Universe. They use it during Moon Knight, too. When they're revealing the true origin of the Stephen Grant persona, that he was a character in a fictional movie called Tomb Busters, the production company of that movie on the poster was listed as Timely Atlas Productions. That was another Easter egg for Timely Comics. But what happened is, is it started out as Timely Comics. Then in the 1950s, they changed their name to Atlas Comics. Then after that, they changed their name to Marvel Comics. The next Easter egg is that movie that Kingo made in the 1970s, and a lot of you will probably remember this movie from the Eternals movie, like they reference it in a couple different Marvel movies. If you remember Kingo's backstory, he was with Sprite until he left her in Macedonia and went to India to become a Bollywood movie star. The first real big movie that he starred in later in the timeline was Son of Sirash, and that is the poster that you're seeing on this wall here. And at the time, he was pretending to be his great-great-grandfather. And what would happen is that he would just disappear after a little while and resurface as that person's son. And then after a certain amount of time had passed by, he'd do the same thing again and again until eventually you get the Kingo that you see today. He joked that his assistant Karun came along and thought that he was a vampire when he started to notice that he would not age. Actually, when we first met, he thought I was a vampire and he tried to stake me through the heart. I have apologized so many times. Not quite enough times. Very close, though. I'll let you know. We'll see actual vampires in the MCU during the Blade movie. There are a couple other Easter eggs for these other movie posters too, but some of these are posters from movies that were released in real life. So I think the events of this episode, this movie release that they're going to this theater is taking place during the year 1974 in the MCU because all these movies are from posters from movies that were released in 1974. 
Like this is the real poster for a movie called Airport 1975. This is a poster for a movie called Earthquake. This is a poster for the real life Love Bug sequel called Herbie Rides Again, which was released by Disney in 1974. So I think that confirms that Kingo's Son of Suresh movie that his great great grandfather supposedly made, even though it was real Kingo, was also released in 1974. The next big Easter egg is on another poster for a movie called Phone Ranger, who, yes, as ridiculous as that sounds, is another actual Marvel character from the comics. In the comics, Phone Ranger was a character named A.G. Bell, like Bell Phone Systems, that was an actual phone company. He started out as a telephone repairman who was sent to fix a phone that, unknown to anyone, was actually acting as a prison for a small race of aliens known as the Celtas. A.G. Bell wound up using the technology that the alien race left in the phone, replicating it, and used it to give himself the power to tap into any communications technology, using that power to become a superhero fighting crime. But like his actual costume kind of looks like a phone person. The star of that movie though is Charles Theobald. The only reference and connection I could think to Marvel Comics is a Brigadier Theobald inky blot in the comics who was a supporting character from Excalibur who has ties to FI6. But if you look here, the production company for this Phone Ranger movie is also Goodman Productions. We see a version of Hunter B-15 come back. I'm not sure which time period this is in. It might also be in the 1970s. We see Sylvie working at that McDonald's. It was a bunch of footage of that that came out last year when they were still filming it. It also seems like they wind up chasing the Zaniac person to this place, so it might be happening in the exact same episode. Zoom and enhance on her little name badge. She's got all those gold stars on it, meaning that she is a model employee, which seems very weird for Sylvie, like she's really trying to hide out. But if you remember, she usually tries to hide out in apocalypse events, meaning that something terrible might wind up happening to this McDonald's. This is part of a much bigger fight Loki has with a bunch of TVA agents inside the TVA, with all of them coming after him with a whole bunch of different portals. It looks like Sylvie is a big part of this fight too. We see some of the remnants of the end of Loki season one with he who remains citadel at the end of time. This is probably just to address what happens right at the beginning of the season. Then there's a scene of Kei Hui Kwan's Ouroboros putting Mobius in a special TVA suit and it looks like what he's sending him to inspect is basically like the unfettered time stream that's gone all chaotic. Love the way he patches together the suit with duct tape. Oh, I'll be fine, you'll be fine, just get out there buddy. They had a bunch of these suits on display at Comic Con. You notice the time stream is unraveling like the past is unraveling as they go forward in time. This was what was on that air message board earlier in the trailer. It's like time itself is coming apart completely at the seams. This is them actually arresting Zaniac and bringing him back to be processed at the TVA. Then everything's going crazy at the TVA in a completely different scene. This is a scene of Loki and Mobius actually walking into the automat to talk and have some food. Sylvie comes back to the TVA in that same automat to talk with them. Not sure who Sylvie is going after with her knife in this scene. That looks a little bit like Loki, but I think it's actually meant to be somebody else. Loki makes the joke that they are actual gods, like literally and mythologically they are gods. Remember, they're meant to be the gods of mischief. This is them still back in the 1970s going after Zaniac, but Loki pulls the same trick that he pulled during the first Avengers movie where he duplicates himself. You see the horns start growing out of his head as he makes the illusions. Then we finally see the version of Ravana Renslayer who escaped at the end of season one that was worn by He Who Remains Kang. Based on the way she's dressed, it looks like she's back in the 1800s too, the same place where the Victor Timely Kang is. The meter Loki is reading here probably is a tie back to the actual logo turning to red, and the red line probably just means time is unraveling, like probably something to do with time completely coming apart at the seams. This scene of Loki talking about how do you choose looks like it's at the beginning of the season when they arrest him because they don't know who he is and he has to re-explain everything from season one. This is a version of Hunter B-15 in another timeline who was a doctor. There's a portal that opens right behind her looking like somebody's coming to either prune her or do something with her. Not sure which version of Casey this is walking through an alleyway. It might be the same Casey from the very end of the season when he came back to the TVA. Like the new version of Casey in the new timeline was way more badass than the previous version. Then they basically replay the Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania post credit scene with them finding the Victor Timely Kang at that 1800s fair. Like that's why they've come to the fair in the first place. And he's basically explaining the concept of controlling time in a very Nikola Tesla kind of way back during the 1800s. Supposedly there's going to be a bunch of different Kang variants that they're going after during this season and this is just one of them. Miss Minutes comes back, but it's sort of like an old timey looking version of Miss Minutes that's created by the Victor Timely Kang. Like this Kang is the one who created her. So that's why the color is all desaturated because we're back during the 1800s. This is another scene of Loki trying to explain the Kang multiverse war, which is depicted on the walls of the TVA. 
Notice that all these different Kangs are dressed like classic comic book Kang the Conqueror. This looks like the scene before they put Mobius in that special space suit, like they're inspecting the timeline completely unraveling. This is the control room of the TVA completely unraveling, the same way we see the timeline unraveling. Like the Miss Minutes message is basically saying, you're completely screwed. Thank you for your service. Time is over now. Completely done. This looks like Ravana Renslayer in the 1800s clothing, but on the void planet at the end of time. Loki looking around the wider TVA and everything is just going completely crazy. And they end the trailer with Loki talking to Mobius, confirming that he is in fact the god of mischief. Always have been, always will be. You notice when the Loki logo is cycling too, the letters are broken like time itself is broken. So it seems like the beginning of the season is him just re-explaining to Mobius and everyone else what actually happened, the truth of Kang, then them finding Sylvie back in the 1970s hiding it at McDonald's, then them going after a bunch of different Kangs like Victor Timely Kang and trying to fix the whole mystery of what's happening with the timeline completely unraveling at the seams. That's meant to get into the whole concept of the Kang multiverse war and the incursions with universes collapsing or colliding with each other all over the place, which is a slightly separate thing, but kind of related. The whole idea is that all of these different universes are either colliding or being destroyed in some way until you get down to the remnants of one single universe for all of reality with one single world, which is Battle World, and that's Avengers Secret Wars, basically. This is meant to directly lead up to Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty though, which is the dynasty of Kangs coming after all the heroes, like not just the Avengers, but a bunch of different characters from different universes. And they're kind of doing a new version of the Kang Multiverse War, but showing you the actual Kang Multiverse War with like crazy special effects, like the $300 million version of the Kang Multiverse War. Some of the upcoming Marvel Phase 5 movies will set that up and some will be more connected to what's happening in Captain America 4 and New World Order in the more Earth-based plot, like the Marvel dark reign of it all. There have been a lot of conflicting reports about when Deadpool 3 takes place in the timeline, like does it take place before or after Loki Season 2? But the whole idea is that Deadpool is jumping around in the timeline with Cable's time travel device and Mobius sets the TVA after him to prune him as a variant. While he's jumping around, he winds up going back to the 838 universe, and the rumor is that they're going to turn that into a House of M reality where Magneto takes over the planet and mutants reign supreme, and that's where he finds this comic book accurate looking version of Wolverine. We'll start getting a bunch more trailers for this during the Ahsoka episodes, of course I'll do more videos, but if you spotted any other easter eggs or references during this that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. I've already done a much longer Deadpool 3 video. They've already been filming. There's a whole bunch of footage. So click here to watch that and click here for all my other Comic-Con trailer videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.